Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong. Welcome to this third Sunday after Easter. We're still very much in the resurrection season. Well, for many of us, and certainly for me, this is a slightly strange way of worshipping. But the important thing is that it is still worship. And I do hope that as we go on together, you will feel a real engagement with our Lord Jesus 
through the Holy Spirit. Now this service has been pre-recorded and many people have contributed to it just of course as they would when we're in church together. Tessa will give us the opening prayer in a moment, Elizabeth and Bob will read the gospel and Yoris and Anita and Di will provide music and the Hosene family will help us with our prayers. Now there will be a time a bit later on when we can uh, share the peace uh, in a virtual kind of way by sending a text message to someone whom we love. This won't be a service of Holy Communion, but there will be a time quietly to enjoy knowing that we are in the presence of Christ who loves each one of us. Today our theme is around the idea of journeying through life, through different landscapes and with different people at different times. And our journey story today is about those two friends walking to the village of Emmaus after the crucifixion and being joined by a friend. And we'll meet, read more about that in a bit. So now we'll pause for a moment and settle ourselves. And before Tessa says our opening prayer, we'll listen to a wonderful hymn by Marty Haugen, The Road to Emmaus. On the journey to Emmaus, with our hearts cold as stone, the one who would save us had left us alone. Then a stranger walks with us, and to our surprise, he opens our stories, and he opens our And our hearts burned within us as we talked on the way How all that was promised was ours on that day So we begged him stay with us and grant us your word We welcomed the stranger and we welcomed the Ever-present God, be with us in our isolation, be close to us in our distancing, be healing in our sickness, be joy in our sadness, be light in our darkness, 
be wisdom in our confusion. Be all that is familiar when all is unfamiliar. That when the doors reopen, we may with the zeal of Pentecost inhabit our communities and speak of your goodness to an emerging world. For Jesus' sake. Amen. So now we come to our moment of saying sorry to God for the things that have gone wrong in our lives. Father God, we bring to you the wrong turnings we have made in our life's journey. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Lord, we bring to you the many on our journey whom we have failed to befriend. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit of God, we bring to you the times when we did not recognise Jesus with us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Gospel reading for today, according to St Luke, chapter 24, reading from verse 13, The Road to Emmaus. That same day, two of them were walking to the village Emmaus, about seven miles out of Jerusalem. They were deep in conversation, going over all these things that had happened. In the middle of their talk and questions, Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were not able to recognise who he was. He asked, what's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? <clears throat> they just stood there, long-faced like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's happened during the last few days? He said, what has happened? They said, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene. He was a man of God, a prophet, dynamic in work and word, blessed by both God and all the people. Then our high priests and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death and crucified him. And we had our hopes up that he was the one, the one about to deliver Israel. And it is now the third day since it happened but now some of our women have completely confused us. Early this morning, they were at the tomb and couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it empty, just as the women said, but they didn't see Jesus. Then he said to them, so thick headed, so slow hearted, why can't you simply believe all that the prophets said? Don't you see that these things had to happen, that the Messiah had to suffer, and only then enter into his glory? Then he started at the beginning with the book of Moses and went on through all the prophets, pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. I'm continuing the Gospel reading from Luke as Jesus disappears and the two men are left talking about their experience. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed. He acted as if he were going on but they pressed him. Stay and have supper with us. It's nearly evening. The day is done. So he went in with them and here is what happened. He sat down at the table with them taking the bread he blessed and broke and gave it to them and at that moment open-eyed wide-eyed they recognized him and then he disappeared back and forth they talked didn't we feel on fire as he conversed with us on the road as he opened up the scriptures for us they didn't waste a minute they were up and on their way back to jerusalem they found the eleven and their friends gathered together talking away it's really happened the master has been raised up. Simon saw him. Then the two men went, went over everything that had happened on the road. 
and how they recognized him when he broke the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, as we know, there are many stories in the gospels about Jesus after his crucifixion, and all of them record his friend's fear and astonishment at meeting him again. And it's not surprising since those people encountered death more closely and more frequently even than we do. And this story that we've just heard is for me one of the most beautiful and resonant of all those post-resurrection stories. You know I can so easily empathize with this picture of friends, perhaps a husband and wife, traveling back to their home village sharing their disappointment, their grief, their sadness. There's so much of that around at present, isn't there? Plans that we had now on hold or dashed, friends or family members whom we've loved, who have died, and just ordinary pleasures, pleasures with friends that are now denied us, all easily adding up to a sense of hopelessness and anxiety. Well, we do sometimes think of our lives as a journey, as it can help us to make sense of them as we travel on from one place or stage to another. And there's no doubt that this is a really difficult stage for most of us in our journey. In that well-known Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd, uses that imagery, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And there's also more broadly Robert Fro Frost's famous poem, The Road Not Taken, which speaks of those forks in the road that we must choose between. Well, the Emmaus story for me picks up on a number of experiences that I've had on my journey, and not least as I go through the present valley. Maybe that's also true for you. There's the experience of being able to share what's happening with someone else, as these two in the story did, as they walked along, not keeping it bottled up inside, where it can turn to bitterness or depression. And although we may not for the present be able to share a meal together or a drink in the pub as we would have done, there are the conversations in the street, on the telephone, and through all these electronic ways that we are discovering. And then there's the experience of someone who perhaps unexpectedly comes alongside and puts our situation into the wider context of our life's journey. Someone who gives me perspective on my immediate situation and perhaps helps me to see some meaning in it and some hope for the future. And in this story, Jesus puts the friend's sadness into the wider perspective of God's story for the world, seeing each stage in our life as having wider value and meaning is really important for us. And then there are the moments when I see a situation more clearly than I did. I love the moment in that story when it says their eyes were opened and they recognized him. For some of us, the story speaks to us about the times when we realize afresh that he is with us and actually has been all the time. And others of us may speak of light coming into a dark time or joy reappearing through sadness. Well, I hope that this story will help us to know that we are not alone, that there is meaning to our lives, and that our hearts can still be warmed when all around seems to have gone cold. Now we have a few minutes just to pause and either have a time just asking each other or thinking about who might it be from history, from fiction, or from the Bible that you would, at the moment, most like to share a walking conversation with? And then we can move on to sharing the piece together, either with those with us at home, if they are, or send a text message to someone whom you love. You can easily do that on a smartphone. Well, during this time, Anita and Yoris will play some gentle music by Bach for us, and then we'll move on to our time of prayers from our two families.
loves Jesus as she walked with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Walk with those who are feeling alone and lonely. Walk with those who are worried about money. Walk with those coping with homeschooling and help us to understand how we may support them. Walk with those who suffer alone, at home, in hospitals and in care homes, and with those who care for them, as they make their journey without their loved ones. Help them to recognise that you are with them. Walk with us, Jesus, as you walk with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. As we journey each day through these difficult times. Give us the courage, patience and hope to see new possibilities ahead. Open our eyes to a renewed world of loving relationships. Of a clean and green planet full of peace and joy. As we travel on, we thank you for the blessings in the midst of troubles. For all the new ways to share our lives together. For the beauty of the spring countryside around us. For new friendships made. And, and for your presence with us every step of the way. Amen. This picture by Rembrandt shows the moment when the friends recognise who he is as he breaks the bread. So as we think about that moment in the story and in our lives, I'll say this prayer. Jesus, bread of life, you come to us whenever we break bread in your name. You bring us together, friend and stranger, young and old, rich and poor, wise and foolish, devout and sceptic, to open our eyes to you, present in the heart of our community. As we journey on, may we be open to receive the unexpected gift of your love from others, and may your love overflow in us to be shared with all we encounter. Propel us from this place to go out with good news on our lips and renewed hope in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and
And so now we come to the end of our time together with God's blessing for us all. That God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, there we are. Um, unusual experience for me, not having any of you to be seen, but I hope that nevertheless it has been a time in which our hearts can be engaged with the love of God and with Christ's presence uh, with us. So I'm sure we shall be continuing different forms of worship through the week with, uh, with Marcus uh, and next Sunday there will be an announcement about what will our service be on, on that day. Thank you.